There's never been a movie with four fat lead women. And I know we can fucking kill that shit. I don't see why not. So you're saying a very talented thin woman could not get in? Well, yeah, as an extra. This is another episode of Expeditiously. I am your host, Tip T.I. Harris. And here we like to uh, have conversations with people who are relevant to the discussion on things that will push the culture, the community, and the generation forward. Our guest today may be small in stature, but she more than make up for it with her huge personality. If she's in the room, you'll know it by her booming voice and her infectious laughter. You don't really have that crap, do you? That's you don't think so? Thing. You don't think well, so? tell them what you know about me. Do you know anything about me? Sir? Man, I tell you what, I know you've been tearing a damn, you've been tearing a hole in the pavement for 25, 30 years or so. I know that you can get on stage, man, and kick ass with the best of them, make anybody laugh at the drop of a hat. I know that you've toured with Cat Williams. I know that you have starred, or uh, well, you had a bigger role than mine in Dolomite. <laughs> what is my name? <laughs> uh, yeah, we're, we're movie mates. Yeah, absolutely, man. I know. So, I mean, those are. I know you. I know you had. I, I think probably about what five, six maybe seven consecutive years at Comic View where yeah. you tow that motherfucker down. Uh, but I'm sure I don't know as much as I need to know. But I just didn't want you to read that old copy. But no, nah, because I'm saying, you, you know, because, you, you know, it's just, it's, it's like if we're going to keep it flowy and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, oh, flowy, is that the word? Flowy, is that the word? Saying? Then yeah, just well, listen. If, for those if you of you, point out shit, you, you know, yeah, I just want to get all your accolades correct, right, Queen. Okay. I want to get your accolades correct, Queen. Okay, baby. Now, now she's easily recognizable by her signature look. Now that is the uh, platinum blonde Caesar. You know what I'm saying? That lays just perfectly on her face. You know what I'm saying? And listen, <laughs> her manicure, her long manicure nails, and a bling that pimp cup usually. But right now we got a plastic cup. I'm, Cheers. I'm more, I'm more down with the plastic. Anyway. You dig what I'm saying? Yeah, mm-hmm. man. Hey, if y'all didn't know no better, this is Queen Lunel. Welcome to Expeditiously. Thank you. I'm very honored to be here. Man, we so happy to have you here. Are you? I am. So so now you, you hail from the Bay Area. Yeah, I was born in Arkansas, but I was raised in the Bay Area. Man, what part of Arkansas? Tallet, Arkansas, population like 320 today. What? 320. It's very, very small. Is this tequila? It is tequila. Oh, now, now you have a, a CD here that says, I only drink at work. Right. I'm working. You dig what I'm saying? I'm we drinking. Work, we getting it together. <laughs> we, getting this, we getting this shit together now. Right. Uh, I always respected you and your company because it, you would say any fucking thing. You would say anything and and... This shit be funny even if it wasn't meant to be funny. You have a brutal honesty about yourself that I always was attracted to. I never thought you were paying that much attention, Tip. That's very <laughs> nice of you to say. I sure appreciate that, yeah. man. Now, listen. Uh, coming from the Oakland area, man, uh, you got your you got your starting show biz hosting a cable show yeah. called Soul Beat. Yeah, it was a network, the Soul Beat Television Network. You had several shows within that network. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Now, is that where you first discovered that you were funny? No, because I got that job because I was funny. I I, I don't know when. I get asked this all the time. I don't know when uh-huh. I discovered it because I come from a real slick, slick mouth family. Okay, yeah. You know, if you don't Talk shit, thumb, swallow spit that's right. all day long. If you don't have a thick skin... You don't even need to be around any of us. That's why we never bring <laughs> any friends to the family reunion or nothing like that. That's right. So deep in Arkansas, if you get all in your feelings, you're trapped because ain't yeah. nobody going to take you 45 minutes out of Thailand to get to maybe Texacana so you yeah. get a plane or a train or something like that right. out of there. So we just really keep to ourselves. You know, That's why I learned my... That's why I got my slick mouth at at home. Yeah, but usually, man, we find our talents at the house before we even get a chance to sham with the world. That's facts. You know, and I spent a little time in uh, Arkansas. Did you? Yes, I did. Uh, for, the, the littler, the better. The yeah. far, <laughs> far. No city. shade, Arkansas. I was born there. You know, I got mad love for man, you. Man, know. listen, man. I, I don't was in, need the red ants. I don't need the mosquitoes. I, I, don't need I was in prison. I was in Far City. Oh, what fun! <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm telling you. Now, I, now look, let me just ask you. Okay, you want to get off the page for a second, and we can do that here and now. I want to ask you, what is it that you, what is it do you think kept you relevant on the comedy circuit and the comedy scene? Because you've done like close to 30 movies, right? Yeah. So what do you think from the time you started up until right now kept you relevant on the comedy scene? You know, I, that's a good question. I think that I'm going to credit a lot of it to my daughter, who's 24 years old. Okay. Because if you have young people in the house, then you hear about young people things. That's right. And then you can com- comment on them. You right. Know? Um, before that, I think it was just the fact that I say yes more than no, mm. and my relatability to people, you know... Um, a lot of guys don't want to hear female comments because they think we're talking about our period or we're talking about our nails or we're talking about <laughs> our lousy boyfriend. But I'm talking about straight up like sexual encounters in relationships, uh-huh. out of relationships. I think um, that, uh, you know, ladies can relate to me or what I'll be saying and men can relate to me yeah. because the things I'm saying that women would say, I'm not saying it in a hateful way. Give us an example, Lunel. Well, for example... A lot of uh, men quite enjoy the art of, you know, was it fellatio? Yeah, fellatio. Yeah. If you if you don't want to say suck a dick, you can say fellatio. Blowjob. Yeah, okay. A lot of BJ. guys like blowjob. Yeah, BJ. Yeah. But but see, I remember back in the good old days mm-hmm. when you guys' dicks was hard already when we put them in our mouth. <laughs> like, goddamn, we got to do all this work and shit? Like, goddamn. You about to get your dick suck, your dick should be hard already. Now well, I got to do all this bullshit. <laughs> hey, man. It's too much work. It's yeah. called a blow job, not a blow vacation. <laughs> Shit. I mean, so the, the, now, does the size really matter, Lunel? Well, it can matter in one part of your body and not matter in another part of your body. Now, what does that mean? I mean, you can't have a dick that's too big to suck, but not too big to fuck. <laughs> I mean, you gave me the tequila, goddammit. Hey, man, I want you to Just speak your mind. one shot. I, want you to I wasn't sp- going to go into the dick shit so early, man, Tim. Man, come on, man, man, we're going to get down oh to it, man. God. Man, well, come on, man. Man, we'll pull the plastic off. Get on in there. Yeah, I thought we were talking about education and children. So fuck that. Okay, straight to the dick shit. Straight to the dicks. Now, is it, <laughs> now, is it, now I'm going to ask a question for Dina, because Dina always wanted to know this. When you, like, Is it important to cuff the balls? Is that important at all? Personally, I don't even fuck with the balls. <laughs> I don't give a fuck if you got any balls. <laughs> Ken don't have no balls. <laughs> and he got all the pussy from Barbie and Skipper and all them bitches. I don't see the purpose of balls. It's up to how sperm to make babies. Yeah, now, They can go back up in you for all I care. T- <laughs> now, when you say, so you telling me that fellatio uh, to a woman is more enjoyable when there's already an erection. That has taken place. Uh, let me think. Yeah, because <laughs> goddamn, who wants? I got. Now I gotta get it hard. I gotta get it hard. But that, how long is that gonna take? But don't that show you how talented you are, motherfucker? If the thought of me <laughs> sucking your dick don't get your dick hard, I don't want to suck it. I, I don't want to suck it. Shit. <laughs> So you say a sucking soggy dick is not necessarily womp, one of womp, your favorite womp. Womp. Like, we'll do it, but we're laying there saying this motherfucker. Right <laughs> That's what we're saying. Is that what y'all think? Yeah, no matter how we look at you and these loving eyes and all that shit, we're saying this motherfucker. That's what we're saying. <laughs> Real talk. So now, look, man, what if you got a guy and you know that this guy, you know how he performs. You already, you're aware of his performance. You've experienced him before. And this particular day, you know what I'm saying, for whatever reason, he, he you know, he he's not, he ain't hard. He ain't getting hard. Uh, are you going to? That's uh, where the blow comes in. <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> Yeah, no. <laughs> but does he get credit for his past performances? Or is if it... your dick ain't getting hard for some reason, maybe you got a lot on your mind. <laughs> you know, maybe you worked out a little too hard today. Maybe uh, you've been drinking. So let's just bypass that. And why don't you suck my dick for a while? <laughs> what the fuck is that? <laughs> mean? I don't, you know what that means, you... ladies and gentlemen. This was not how this interview was supposed to be. <laughs> I can't get away from the the the, the subject, but I'm very. Uh, uh, explicit about the subject. Come on, let's talk. And I talk. think that a lot of the uh, you know people out there can relate to what I'm saying. And I'm sorry if this puts guys on the spot.
spot the next time you get ready to have sex with a woman. Uh-huh. You know, make sure your dick is hard. It would be, would be so much happier. Well, we have if sponsors. You can't, then, we you have know. sponsors, and we have sponsors that that offer me in that oh, kind God. of support. They offer me in that kind of, you know, enhancement that. Uh, if they are with a woman like you, they going to need this shit so they don't get talked about well, it. And do you tell your girlfriends the next day? Well, you definitely don't need a nine-hour erection either. Ain't nobody got time for that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. With your horny goat weed or whatever the fuck that shit is they selling <laughs> on the side of the road. Now, look, though. It can, so is there such thing as too hard? And no. Like, there's no such thing as too hard. Mm-mm, I had I, a little uh, I had a little friend in bed, uh, you know, one time, this it was a younger man, of course. His dick was, you could have hung a picture with this motherfucking dick. <laughs> I didn't a dick that hard since I was 12 motherfucking years out. 12 years old, I you just now? felt one of my god brothers. <laughs> <laughs> you know, kids there. experiment. And shit I, like mean, that. I mean, I'm telling you. Now, on the other hand, uh-huh. people talk about, you know, women my age and above or even younger getting a thing called vaginal dryness. I'm just oh. here to tell you that that is no such thing. That's a myth. That's a myth. Okay. If your vagina won't get dry and you're with a guy, that's because your pussy is saying to you, we don't want to fuck him. <laughs> that's what it says. <laughs> now, you let Michael B. Jordan come in here and twist Marla Gibbs' nipple, and that bitch will <laughs> slide off this motherfucking chair all the way down to the elevator and into the lobby. No such thing. <laughs> Hey man, so uh, hey Marla <laughs> and Marla Gills. Shout, shout out to Marla. Shout out to Marla Gills, man, a legend in her own right, man. She yeah. was uh, uh, she played many, 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 many roles. One of the most recognizable is Florence, off of the, the Jeffersons. Jeffersons. You know what I'm saying? Now, uh, is there such thing as for a guy to be fucking too long? Is there such thing? Oh is hell it, yeah! Is, does Look, that become yeah. non pleasurable? Yes, yes. So how long is too long? And Because, you know, you go from I don't want no one-minute man to God damn, when are you going to finish? Yeah, that's like when you say little sweet stuff like, hey, get the fuck off me. <laughs> get off me. God damn it. Shit. That, that's when you say sweet little shit like that. Like, yeah, yeah, uh-uh, not doing this. Because then, you know. How long is too long? Well, too long is if you start to run out of lubrication. We'll see, if you don't fuck all the juice out of bitch. No, there's a such thing as fucking all the juice out of bitch. You can be as excited <laughs> if you want to. Michael B. Jordan, well, it would take him longer than it would. <laughs> <laughs> it Michael would B. Jordan. Longer. Michael B. Jordan, what's up, brother? I got uh, I got somebody who would love to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> what is it about Michael B. you like so much? There's so many things. Oh, okay. Okay. And I've met him before, by the way, because I met him at the SAG Awards. You shoot your shot? Did you shoot your shot? I, I was, I, you know, I, there was a lot going on. It was okay. at the SAG Awards. Oh, you, I was you there. froze up. You froze well, up. I didn't freeze. We got the picture and everything. Uh-huh. But I had to talk to Lupita, and I had to talk to, it was right. the Black Panther table was sitting next to the stars, uh, as boring table okay. at the SAG Awards, and we, 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 we met like that. Okay. I think I met him at Jamie Foxx's house one of them parties one time, too. Mm. I hugged me so much, so good. <laughs> I had to fry me off of him like a cheap suit. You know, like, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Michael, Michael, Michael. Um, what we like about him, I think, is that he's got, a, he's a man, but he got a baby face a little bit, too, and he's got juicy lips, he's got a great body and he's talented and he's smart and he's not a thought. Mm. That's very attra- attractive to a lady. You say not a thought? Not a thought. What that mean? That mean he ain't out here fucking all these video hoes. You, you know, Tip. You don't know what that man you know doing. What that you don't know what that man doing. I know what I like to think he's doing. Okay, now that's better. Now that's so much if we, better. That's what fantasy is, right? That's much better. Like, it's gonna be, I'm never gonna get Michael B. Jordan in a motherfucking bed, right? Unless I roofie the motherfucker like Bill Cosby. <laughs> Probably not gonna happen. But I can. You don't know, don't talk yourself nine, out of it. 995,000. Don't talk yourself out of it. Oh, you no, never I'm know. Not, let me, look, let me get another shot out of this. Yeah, you man, damn right, damn right. I'm sweating on my top lip. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. No, I mean that I and I don't, uh, you know, I don't put myself out of the game. That's I'm just right. saying, you know, I don't have time to pursue him. I'm too busy fighting out Albie Shore and Darius McCrary and all the okay. all them. You yeah. can go on my Instagram and see that if you don't believe me. You can yeah. avoid me. No, I believe you. I ain't got no reason not to believe. No, because I don't. I don't lie. No, man. No, just. just. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> just got to j- j- bend the truth for Tad. Maybe a little. Just a smidgen. Yeah. I can dig it. Now you. But I ain't been the truth about that. You, you, <laughs> you portray a prostitute named Lunel. Again. Mm, <laughs> with a heart of gold. And in the end, just like Julia Roberts' character in Pretty Woman, you got the man. In the movie Borat. Yes, yeah, that's correct. Yeah, yeah. Now, how was that? How did, what, what was your inspiration? What did you draw from? Oh, let me see. Well, um, <laughs> first of all, there's two There's two things about Borat. Borat was an Academy Award-nominated film. Okay. Um, it was a um, real guerrilla filmmaking experience. Okay. It was uh, one of the most profitable, fi- profitable films I've ever done okay. to this day. Okay. And it was before the word viral was out. It was it was viral. Gotcha. You know, it was, everybody was 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 about that. Created a lot of controversy because there was only five stars in the movie. Everybody else thirsty had signed a release. <laughs> then it went worldwide, and then everybody wanted to get their money. Too late, you signed the release. <laughs> the bad thing about doing Borat for me was though that I could have I could have been put on years ago when I came out. Mm-hmm. However. I had to sign the six month gag order. Mm. So I couldn't do any of the publicity. All I could do was sit home on my bed and watch Sasha and Ken Davidian on Letterman, on, you know, these T V shows and right. everything like that. Right. And I couldn't do any of it. And I couldn't even say anything. Like if you go to the bar at the Roosevelt mm-hmm. and you hear people go, that's not a hooker. You can't say I'm not really a hooker. I'm really an actress uh, because of the confidentiality agreement that you signed, and you don't know who you're talking to in Hollywood. That's real, that's you might real. be talking to somebody from the studio. So I didn't get to get the shine off that movie Damn. that I wanted to, and that's they happened to me like was, nine times. Like I should have been. So they thought you was actually portraying yourself. People in the street did. Yeah, what? That, that's that hooker, <laughs> Lunell. <laughs> I'm like, Are you, did you see the movie, or do you know about my past? <laughs> hey. Do you think that women comedians catch a bad rap or have a harder way to go to make it in this industry? Yeah. But. Okay. Um, I think that if you have the, you know, this is a guy's game. It just is. It, it's changing. Hmm. And it's going to continue to change. Okay. But as long as the men are running most of the comedy clubs in the United States of America, mm. as long as men are making executive decisions in the studios and stuff like that about who gets specials, who doesn't, and stuff like that, mm. and as long as men are running the purse strings as well to control but, who's getting money and who's not getting money, yeah, we're going to catch a bad rap. But I believe that that just is because most of the female comics out here may or may not appeal to those particular guys. Mm. If you're a type of chick that guys like and are pulling for, then you may get your coin. But if you're out here and you're being bitter and you done pissed everybody off (laughs) and stuff like that, and they don't want to work with you and they don't want to pay you. Mm. So it really sort of depends on you and your material and your presentation, I think, maybe. Okay. But but aside from all that, yeah, we, 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 we have a hard way to go because, like, you know, you, you my daughter is sick right now. Okay. Okay, on top of everything else I have to do, which uh-huh. I have to leave tomorrow and all this, I have to get her some chicken soup made. Right. Daddy don't have to worry about that. That's not true. Daddy don't That's make it. That's not true. That's not true. Yes, it is. I do it for mine. Well, yes, but you're an exception, not the <clears throat> rule. <laughs> and I think you probably make it by going in the kitchen and say, hey, Consuelo, no, por favor, no, no, pollo no. es supo. First of all, I would like to say on behalf. Well, niña. I would, <laughs> I would like to say on behalf of all the fathers out there, no matter how you get it done, long as you get it done, that is what is Well, important. that's true, because I'm not cooking this shit in real talk. You know I got saying? my girl Cherise coming <laughs> over to make it for my daughter. But I'm going to add the cayenne and shit. You know? <laughs> I'm not going to cook the chicken noodle soup, but I will make sure the chicken noodle soup get made, uh-huh. or the vegetable soup, or, you know, the, the shea crabs, corn soup, or, you know what I'm saying, the lobster bisque, yeah, whatever it is. but, like, uh, but the mommy guilt kicks in and you want to do it you want to be the one to make it you want sure. you know if you're if you're that type of mom and i don't appreciate the fact that i'm not making it 
I do appreciate the fact that I got somebody who loves my daughter who will follow my lead mm -hmm. and make it for me. Then I'm a, you know, it takes a village. It does. You know? That's the greatest thing. That's the greatest resource, the greatest asset that I could say that I've had throughout my career, man, that will help me and allow me to flourish and and execute on my plans properly. My support system. If it wasn't for my sister Precious, mm -hmm. uh, my mom, mm -hmm. and and my 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 other mom, Miss Diane, mm -hmm. I wouldn't be able to keep mm -hmm. my household intact mm -hmm. and still move and groove and do all and move at the speed of opportunity mm -hmm. the way we need mm -hmm. to as entertainers so i understand exactly what you're saying but i will not say that the father is off the hook for that and he isn't even expected if my daughter my son called me and say they sick i don't give a damn what's going on i'm gonna handle it i'm gonna make sure something you sure. know what i mean now but if they are with my mother-in-law miss diane my mama or if they was with Precious, I already know. They taking care of. Sure. You dig what I'm saying? However, if they at the house and it ain't nobody there but them, I'm going to stop what I'm doing and go get it done. And well, I don't, You don't have to be a mom for that. No, you don't. Absolutely. And there's a bunch of fathers that are chefs out there. That's right. That are, you know, gourmet and otherwise that that do all the cooking in the house and the woman I don't can do cook now. I just don't cook chicken noodle soup. Well, okay, okay, I can okay. cook, you know, I cook, a, I cook a hell of a sweet potato pie now, Lunel. Really? You was a little baker. I, I cook it. Well, I, I'm a one-trick pony as a mm. baker now. I, I only do sweet potato pie. That's do, all you need to know how to I cook, I don't do though. pecan. I don't do cakes. That's how, that's and a, if you do, do sweet no potato, potato that's red, major. Man. Hey, the you best. You looking a little bit like a sweet potato the right best. now. <laughs> sweet potato colored. <laughs> Sweatsuit. <laughs> but, I um, cook the best sweet potato pie. Well, that remains to be seen. I'll be glad to get a slice whenever you... I, I'm going to get your whole pie. I ain't going to give, give you no pie. damn slice. I'm going to give you a whole pie. And you're going to make it yourself? Absolutely. This is being recorded for quality assurance, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> because I'm going to hold you to that. I'm going to wait all the way till wait. sweet potato pie season. Man. So you this need... next Christmas coming... I think I might have some going on this next month in February. I and might you going to call me come pick up a pie. I might do that. Oh, T.I. No, oh, now listen. Now see, now. How will I ever repay you? And here you is, and here you is spending all that time and attention on Michael B. Jordan. You see what I'm saying? Baby, you a married man. I am a married man. Your wife is in shank and shanking reach. She's right over there. <laughs> I know. You're a married listen, man. Michael's not married. I know, but neither listen to me. Neither is Albie, neither is Darius. I know, but listen to me, though. Listen to me, though. This is what I'm trying to say. Isn't everyone's, like, don't everyone want to know that they're wanted? Absolutely. Everybody do. does, doesn't yeah, it? Sure. You know what I'm saying? I'm sure that when my wife, she decides to put on those dresses that show cleavage all the way down to her belly button, and you know what I'm saying, and she have her, her side and her back and everything got it for the purpose of, so when she passed by people, they look and say, God damn, she fine as a motherfucker. You, you know, see the what I'm same saying? pussy is in that outfit is in a flannel gown. <laughs> same pussy. I ain't going to do none of that shit. You either want to fuck or you don't. I'm not, you know, all this old dressing up and shit. Every now and then. My husband, he don't give a fuck. I, when we I got married, either. I had a little outfit on and shit. And he was like, I said, how you like this, baby? He said, looks great. Take it off. Boom. And that's I never exactly bought how, another negligee. That's either. exactly how I feel. My old lady, she's a beautiful lady inside and out. And she goes through all this stuff with the... The, the eyelashes, I don't understand that shit at all. You dig what I'm saying? Well, I've never mind. seen a motherfucker say, you see them badass eyelashes on her? I ain't never seen, I ain't never heard that. There's magic in the lashes, baby. I don't understand there it. Is. I don't, yeah, that, that's so, so y'all can go out. You have a naked-eyed girl come up and bat her eyes at you, and you think the bitch got a twitch. <laughs> but you have a bitch with eyelashes come and bat her eyes at you. You're like, this bitch flirting with me. Hey, listen, There's man. big signals, see, when you ain't got the lashes on. I just never, I ain't, I just, I think, you know, that's what women do to go out and impress other women. Okay, so I thought that Alicia Keys might decide that she, you made your point. Alicia, you done made your point, baby. <laughs> we know that you don't want to wear makeup and you shouldn't have to. Right. I thought maybe by the Grammys she might say, oh, fuck it, I'm going to throw them off. 
and right. puts the makeup on with, to what's not to be. Uh huh. You're a beautiful, clean faced woman, Alicia. Right. But goddamn, a little mascara wouldn't hurt a bitch. Is all I'm saying. <laughs> I mean, man, I think I think what Alicia wants to do is she wants to she wants to bring the attention and the focus back to her brilliance and her talent. And her ass? Did you see that dress on the fucking Grammy? I, I did not. Man. Okay. I didn't even, you, I didn't okay. even watch the Grammys. I didn't even watch the Grammys, man. You know what I'm saying? I was pretty tall. My daughter danced on the Grammys. She did. She danced with Lizzo. Okay, now. Mm -hmm. Now, I didn't even watch the Grammys, man. Uh, I was pretty toe up, man. Yeah, I I get it. I was pretty toe up. I wouldn't have watched either, but my daughter was dead. Oh, hell yeah. You got to watch. That's how I went from one of the greatest days to one of the worst days. Yeah. You know, my whole family was posed and ready to see my daughter. Yeah. And then this happened. Right. When they were doing hair and makeup early today. Damn. So then you're like, oh, my God, I wonder what her mood is. And she was texting me from backstage. And people was crying mm. and breaking mm. down. And it was just the worst uh, worst thing ever. Man. So, you know, I, but that, I, I watched the Grammys. Alicia looked great. Yeah. You know. But I'm not going to be like, looking at Alicia's ass, though. I'm but not, it's that's unavoidable, my, my, my nigga. Like what my are you sister. talking it's about? Like my I'm a heterosexual, grown-ass woman. Okay. And even I said, God damn, look at that ass. <laughs> Shit. Nah, man. I, I just, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even. Okay, we'll do the interview when Tiny ain't around. No, it ain't about ah, her. Ah, it ain't about her. Okay. I mean, it's about my, uh, that's my, no, like my she she's nice married dress. to some, my, like uh, my brother. Right, but. I'm not. Michelle feeling, Obama's married to the President of the United States, and we still said, look at that ass. I don't know oh, Obama Michelle. like that. I don't know Obama like that. He didn't I don't know him the, either. He didn't but invite Michelle me to the White House nice one time. Ass. So I'm going to look at Michelle, because I don't know Obama like that. Oh, I like really that. Don't, oh, I don't know Obama. Thing. I don't know him. It's a respect so it's a thing. Respect exactly. I would, I wouldn't you wouldn't I wouldn't make any advances and that like that, but I wouldn't notice, because I don't really know Obama. He's never introduced himself to me, right. and he's never, you know what I'm saying, shown any kind of exponential uh, uh, accommodations toward me and what I would like. Oh, so mercy. I'm just saying, so I would, I would, I would acknowledge him like, oh, that's... Well, okay, look, look cool. I have look plenty of friends who have great-looking husbands, and they're my friends, but if their husbands still look good, I'd be like, girl, you got that fine motherfucker, what's it like? You know, I just uh, talk, <laughs> you know... That's how y'all talk? That's how I talk. I don't know how y'all talk. <laughs> <laughs> What's it like to wake up to this motherfucker? <laughs> ah, yeah. How your husband feel about you talking like that? Like, My you husband know. gives less than his shit. He knew me before this. Right. And he knew who, who he was getting involved with when he got involved with me. Mm -hmm. And, you know. He, How long you been married, Lunel? 20 years in August. 20 years. Not all in a row. Not all. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> you got to take it away for the, you know, the restraining order years and the what? separations and the drugs and shit. Okay. We've been together about six years. <laughs> <laughs> Man, so, I mean, like, what do you think it takes to stay married? I think that it varies, you know, mm -hmm. with different people. Mm -hmm. I think you need to have people who accept each other as is and mm. don't be trying to change them. A person will change their self, I believe, if they feel... If they feel the growth within it. themselves, and they, you know, they'll change themselves. I believe it. You come in trying to change somebody, you're gonna be, you know, greatly disappointed. Yeah. But nobody can change me. Although when I acknowledge the fact that I actually was married, you know, there was. Yeah. A... <laughs> <laughs> you was out here thotting around, Luna. I mean, you know, I'm just. I mean, I mean, I'll talk to you about that later. But. Um, <laughs> But but I'm just you know there's some things yeah, not many Lunel listen now, that I don't you. do. Why what you put that man through, Lunel? You I ain't that? put him through a goddamn Why'd thing. You put that man through, Are man? you out of your mind? If you only knew, I'm there's a saying. reason I don't post my husband on social media. Why? Because my fucking husband is. Because uh, you don't want your side nigga ass. to get upset. You don't want your side niggas my to side get upset. My side niggas stay in a side niggas place. <laughs> And they got to know that there was a motherfucker before you and there's going to be a motherfucker, same motherfucker after you. Uh. You want in on this motherfucking action or not? <laughs> you know, shut the fuck up and do your thing. But um, I, 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 I don't post my husband because my husband has shady past. 
Yeah, yeah Shady Pass, what that mean? Shady Pass. I don't need nobody saying, hey, that motherfucker shot me back in 85. So, I don't need none of that. So, nigga, no, did you not die? not these blogs. Nigga, did you this. die? I don't need nobody getting it. My husband don't have Facebook. He don't have, he don't have none of that shit. He a real G. He's a real G. He don't give a fuck unless it's going on right now in front of my face. Right. Don't come to him talking about so-and-so said and none of that shit. He don't play none of that shit. Mm. We keep him way, 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 way back in the background. That's right. That's not to say that I don't have, you know, social life. You know, social life now. <laughs> so what, so how far is too far? Like if you out and you socializing, like help me out. Because you know what I'm saying, I'm married. And I don't be wanting to, you know what I'm saying, be too overbearing. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I don't want to, like, you know what I'm saying, try and be too controlling of my woman. You know, so, Tati done moved her chair I don't right in your vision. She's she like, a, yeah, nigga. That means she got a good view of this shit. <laughs> that means she got a good view of this shit. She can see us li- right Listen, live in the color. There's nothing she's going to see or hear out your mouth today that she don't already You know dig about. what I'm saying? That's the most important part. But back to right. the question. Mm-hmm. How far is too far when you're out socializing and you're, and you're grooving and, and, and you're drinking and you're having a good time? And you know what I'm saying? Like, what's too far? I think inappropriate, too long touching and shit is too far. Like, what's if, you, too if, long? You, if you ask a lady mm-hmm. to sit down and join you at the VIP, you hold her hand and she sit down, that's mm-hmm. fine. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. If you slide up next to the bitch and start caressing her arm, now somebody gonna get fucked up. Mm. That's too far. All right, what about looks? Well, <laughs> you just said a minute ago that if it's... um. You know, somebody that you know and respect and stuff like this. Right. And they, you know, got to. But I told you how I was. I'm talking about other motherfuckers out there in the world. Okay, so, looks. Yeah, so looks if a motherfucker. can lead to fucking. <laughs> <laughs> Real talk. Looks can lead to fucking. Yeah. So if a motherfucker over here looking in the wrong time in the wrong Don't place. Don't be looking too goddamn long. Don't be yeah. looking at eyeballing no body parts and all that shit. Because if I catch you looking, yeah. now somebody going to get slapped. <laughs> fuck if, you looking at if they lucky if you're lucky but yeah. I don't have that problem my husband don't give a fuck about believe it or not you know my husband don't give a fuck about nobody but my little fat ass He's, he, <laughs> he don't he don't flirt he don't even like to hug bitches he don't flirt no he don't even like to hug people when he's introduced cause he don't want nobody to be able to say he felt my ass he hugged me too long he right. just be like what's up he's right. very cold in that I be way. like that I be like that I, I deal with funny. people. I deal with people. Women, I deal with people. Women the way I want them to deal with mine. You know what I'm saying? I give you a nice shake if I do hug. You know what I'm saying? Boom! I ain't gonna be no no long caress like you know what I'm saying. Well, you hug me. You kissed me on my cheek. I did. But listen, man. But listen. We'll see. I enjoyed it. <laughs> Let's do it again. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, man, I'm being a gentleman. I was raised in the South exactly. by other cordial gentlemen who taught me to respect the lady and to treat her with, you know, uh, as politely as sure, possible. Sure, sure. You know what I'm saying? Now, the the like, I, I, I kiss a lady on her hand. I kiss a lady on her cheek. And make sure your homeboy is sitting in between y'all. What you talking about? Why? Wait, okay, you sit on the hand. If we ain't doing to, shit, why I got to move to and have mission, somebody? Too close. <laughs> too motherfucking close, too close. But if we ain't doing nothing. But you might. See, let me tell you something about men and women. The energy of one leg bent to a next to another leg uh-huh. generate heat like two matches rubbing together. <laughs> get the fuck over there before you get snatched the fuck up. Oh my goodness. And that's I'm talking for ninety eight percent of the women. Out there, the other two percent are white. <laughs> no, I'm saying, so you don't want like you don't do you like do you ever role play, Lunel? What you mean? Awfully personal tip. Don't I know that what we do about, here. Don't you want to talk about the, the war or uh, something like? That? No, not really. Because <laughs> look, this is these are conversations. Do I that, role play? Yes, I do. These are the conversations that the generation you need. You, you need ain't to got push no sex. Is this a sex show? It's an all of the above show. You don't talk to sexy to other folks expeditiously. I do. Oh my god, I'm gonna have to go back. I'm gonna have to go back. I'm gonna have to go back. You had to. I right, will listen. To I, I, I must what, admit. Okay, you, I do. I had not subscribed. Okay. Yet. Okay. I had caught maybe an interview or two, mm-hmm. but I, I I will go back and I will do my my due diligence as well. Too. Yeah, you do that. You just I, check okay, it out. You just check it out. So, what kind of role playing would you? What's healthy role playing? You know. Edibles, you know, strawberry, chocolate, whipped cream, <laughs> shit like that. That ain't even role playing. They're just doing and drugs. You you're just like doing you're, drugs. If you pretend like you, you work at ice cream shop. <laughs> <laughs> you want a cherry on that? 
You want some hot nuts you, on top of that? <laughs> yeah. Do you wear a wig? Uh, I really don't wear wigs because they get in my way because I don't have hair to pin the wig to. Mm -hmm. So now my shit done got all askew and I'm looking like, you know, the Reverend and coming to America and shit. <laughs> So I just, you know, if it's real good, you fling the bitch off anyway. Plus, I get hot and nasty, and I don't, I don't. All right, so that's what I'm trying to say. If you're role playing and you're doing all of that, what is like? Why, why do? Why would you put someone else between? I don't understand where the line is drawn. Oh, I don't understand what you don't motherfucking understand. What are you talking about? <laughs> I just think that I think that you and your husband have enough of an understanding to where you shouldn't want nobody in between them. Me and my husband don't role play. We're straight up and motherfucking down. We're just in and out and motherfucking. We just straight fuck. That's it. <laughs> but when but when we wasn't together. Oh, when see, I, I don't want to talk about that. I don't want to talk about when you weren't together. Oh, you don't want to talk about no, that. No, I'm trying but to... But men want to always talk about these side hoes and shit. You don't want to talk about I don't want to talk about niggas. none of that. No, I don't want to uh, talk about... Oh, well, I was going to... Uh. I don't want to talk about no side... No, I, I'm talking about you, the union of you and your husband and how you keep it together, keep it spicy, keep it hot, and you know what I'm saying? That well, is... Well, if I can the, tell you really honestly, interest. if I can be very, very honest sure. with you... Marriage is so much more than that, right? Because Absolutely. my husband is actually very ill. And we don't actually even do that anymore right now. He just went through prostate cancer, and he has COPD in his lungs, and he's very, very ill. And so we have more than fucking right now. We wow. have a love that you got to still love a motherfucker when they're at their worst. The, the vows say rich or poor... You know, better or worse, in sickness and in health. Sickness and in health. And we're yeah. in the sickness part. So I love my husband. My husband, sick, is a better man than any nigga I know walking right now. That's how bad a motherfucker he is. Mm. And I respect him and I love him whether we fuck or not. Now that's what it's gonna come to one day. Mm. One day you're gonna get to be seventy years old. Mm. One day that pill ain't gonna work. Mm. One day you ain't gonna be fucking, and you still got to look at, look at each other and talk about it mm. and remember about it and caress and do a whole bunch of other shit. Now that's the real talk. Now that's what the fuck we had to get to. God damn it! That's what the fuck we had to get to. We had to go all this way I don't just to get right cancer. here. Man, man, shut the hell up, oh, Lou man. You came so far and did so oh, good. You did so good. It's the tequila. Nah, man, but listen, well, that's real fucking shit, It Lou is. When you, when, you, when you in love, you love somebody, you know, you got to, you know, will you love them if you can't fuck them no more? Now, will you love them if you can't fuck them no more? Absolutely. Because I mean, that's what, will, no, that's well, what, nah, that's that. what real life is. People get sick, people have accidents, people are hospitalized, you know, and yes, the answer is yes, you can. There's people who mar marry people who are paralyzed. There's people who marry people who are in wheelchairs. They're, ne they're never going to have sex. You can find other stuff to do than the penetration thing. I just love him that much that, you know, if he can't do it, then I can't do it either. That makes sense. No. That's very... That's <laughs> it don't very, make no nah, sense. Nah, 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 I ought to be sense. able to get a it's pass. It's a testament. No, it's nah, I ought nah. to be able to get a pass. That ain't my business. That between you and him. Yeah. Look, it's a t but it's a testament of your love, dedication, yeah. and respect for him. And I respect you so much for even sharing that. It's true, and I've never said that before because I don't talk about him like that. Yeah. But, but, but I just listen, want the people to know. Love that, you and know, blessings. It's, love it's and all, blessings to it's him. All that, thank you. Respect. Okay. And and I, m me and my family's heart will be going out to you and yours. Thank you. You know what I'm saying? But I do keep a pretty nigga on my arm, though. <laughs> <laughs> I will say that. And he understands that because he can't come to the premiere with me. He can't go to the uh, after party, you know. So I do keep an escort, you know what I'm saying? An uh, escort? Yeah. Man, I, do, I don't even want to talk about it. I okay, don't even move talk on. About it. All right, so now, Las Vegas. You just wrapped up a three-month Las Vegas residency at SLS Hotel. Um, but you also have a limited run at Jimmy Kimmel's Comedy Club at the yeah. Link uh, Promenade. You're a busy, you're a busy woman. Yeah. You know, I got to eat. A man who does not work does not eat. That's what the Bible says. Mm, God bless the child that got his own. Hmm. 
So I did three months at the SLS. It was Eddie Griffin was doing Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Legend. Uh, Monique was doing Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Legend. And I was doing Sundays at the SLS. Sunday is usually a hard sell, but I was doing good numbers. Then when that residency ended, mm -hmm. uh, or that extended stay ended, my people went to Jimmy Kimmel's spot, which was brand new. Like right. this, this club isn't even a year old yet. Right. And um, they talked them into letting me, you know, they checked the numbers and stuff because, you know, you play with the big boys in Vegas. Right. They don't give a fuck how much they like you. Bitch, can you put some asses in them seats and make us some money? <laughs> right. Right? You can look like a horse. They don't give a fuck as long as you can put some asses in them seats them and tickets. make them some money. Sell them tickets. So they went, and they gave me an opportunity to do it, and I was doing very, very well. And then people were coming to see me, like Ben Vereen, Glodine White, and, you know, a bunch of OGs and, and stuff like that, Ty Dolla Sign. Everybody was coming to see me. Right. And mm -hmm. um, that didn't hurt. Plus, um... You know, that's the only comedy club with a national television show connected to it. Mm. So I got to give shots out to uh, Jimmy Kimmel. They extended my residency once. They've extended it twice. I go back to Vegas Sunday, February 9th. I'm there all through until we do the family reunion in August. <laughs> and then I come back and uh, finish out the year and do New Year's Eve there this year like I did last year. God bless you. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> um, Jimmy Kimmel, by the way, I don't have to tell you, knows everybody. Yeah. He could have picked anybody in the world show to have a residency there. Absolutely. Everybody comes through there, Bellamy and everything. But to be there on a weekly basis for months at a time, uh, to give me that opportunity, I have to give him, you know, kudos. For that. Absolutely. And I thank him too, man, for recognizing your you talent. You got to come see me in Vegas? I will come see you in Vegas. You know, I have my own thing I'm doing in Vegas, man. At I'll Dre. be down at the Dre's. Yeah, so yeah. So I need the, the Who Never number so that I can come, so I'm gonna I can come and I'm get a actually, section. When I want to. Absolutely. I'm actually going to be there um, on the 1st, this Saturday. Oh, you'll be there this Saturday? I'll be there this Saturday. When does Saturday. this air? Now? I, I don't know, man. We, we'll figure it out. When you oh. want it to air? Tonight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wow. Now. You want me to tissue? Nah, I'm good. Everybody has like a, a top five, right? But we're going to say top three. Everybody has top three. If you say top three uh, hip hop artists, most of the time it's gonna be between Pac, Big, and Jay. Okay. If you say uh, the top basketball players, most of the time it's gonna be Kobe, Jordan, LeBron. Uh, if you say top comedians. Who would be your top three comedians? Pryor. Okay. Joan Rivers. Mmm. It's hard because I'm in the Chappelle Murphy uh from drum 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 yeah right yeah Conundrum. you know but That's what, yeah, but, yeah. but but i'm going to have to do a tie for the the third uh because Eddie did it before Chappelle did it right so i think you know and being that i'm into Eddie's movies i would have to go ahead <laughs> on and say Eddie you know because Eddie picked up the gauntlet after you know after prior did with the rock star shit you know what i mean Absolutely. And you did mention that you're in two of Eddie movies, man. We were in Dolomite Is My Name yes, together. Yes, congratulations on our well, Golden Globe well, thank and shit you. like that, Friday. You dig what I'm saying? Yeah. Although you, your your role was uh, exponentially bigger than mine. That's okay, uh, baby. Yeah, but it's all right. It's all right. I get it. But you I got Grammys and shit. I ain't man, got none of them. Man, you know what is coming with the. the, the, the I, I only well, drink at yeah, work. Yeah, I only drink, I only only drink, drink at work. work. Could, be, could bring you your first Chappelle Grammy. Chappelle just won, his, won a Grammy. Yeah, he just won one uh, on Sunday, man. That was real cool. I love Man, Dave is a real cool, like one of the best partners I have in comedy. Dave Chappelle, Kevin Hart, Mike Epps, um, just so many. Uh, Lil Duval. It's so many. It's so many comedians that yeah, I. Mine is Cat. Yours is Cat. Cat. Cat Williams is cool. Is a cool and man. He's been. He's he's back. He's unorthodox. Well, no, well, he has an unorthodox presentation well, of comedy I that mean, I respect. 
You he's know, a legend. He's a legend, yeah, hands let's, let's down, and a great. Like when people, when when Prince died, everybody forgot about Michael. Can't forget about Michael. That's right. So you know, let's not forget about Cat. We just did an episode of the Last OGs together. Okay, I saw and, it on your Instagram. And don't though. forget, Cat won an Emmy for a show that did not win an Emmy. Yeah, you talking about Atlanta, he, right? He, he won the Emmy. Yeah. Atlanta did not. Yeah, that's right. But but as it should have, too. Uh-huh. But you know, um, everybody go through shit, and. Um, I don't think stress we should be judged money, by that. Stress and money can put a lot of pressure on a brother. Yeah, we shouldn't be judged by that. And yeah, I mean, you know, I, I did my time. You, you've you been locked down. My 536-3020 is, is not my phone number, my brother. I've been down too. 594-58019. Hey! <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Give me some again, goddamn. Yeah, it's uh, kind it took of me a long time to eat an apple. It took me a long time to eat apples again. <laughs> a long fucking time. But um, you know, the, the and my loyalty to Cat is because we 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 both were in Oakland at the same time. We have okay. a child the same age. Okay. We were very very poor together at the same time. We okay. would used to go buy our kids shoes at you know the Durant Square, like the slots and swap meet together back in Oakland. I saw the climb, and then when he went to L.A. and he started. Transitioning from Cat in the Hat to, you know, Money Mike, and then from Money Mike to Cat William, you know, he took me with him. Right on. On his very first tour. I'd never been in a private plane before. He did that for me. Mm. I'd never bought diamonds for myself before. He did that for me. Mm. I'd never been paid that much money before. I stayed in five-star hotels as consistently as I did. Mm. So for that, Mm -hmm. I will always be grateful and loyal, Mm -hmm. you know, because uh, everybody goes through shit. That's right, and you I think know. that I think that the the shit we go through make us stronger. And I never it condemn does. a man. I would never speak down on a man or or, or look at you him. You sure about that? I hope that's true. We better not pull up no receipts. Have you talking no shit about? Me. Nah, I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna make sure that I'm gonna make sure that, I, that that you understand the error in your ways. You know what I'm saying? Because I think as brothers and sisters, we must bring attention to shortcomings it's up to us so it could be each corrected. Other code so Absolutely. We can just... And it ain't always got to be private behind the scene. Everybody oh, wanna Lord. everybody wanna avoid the public I, Mine needs to be private behind the scenes. The scene. public correction. But uh, you, I would rate like this. You show your ass in the store, you get your ass whooped That's in the store. That's true. You dig what I'm saying? So, that go for your chilling, though. Nah, not necessarily go for your chilling. That go for... Or your mate. Nah, not even your mate. I'm saying, on, if how about this? If me and my homeboys is out at the mall, right? And my homeboy try me at the mall, I'm going to get my at straightening the at the mall. Right. You dig what I'm saying? But for I'm not, me... If you want me to comprehend and understand, you need to put me to the side and look me in my eye and quietly say, you know, you're being a real bitch right now. You need to motherfucking reel it in. Then I can hear you. Right. But if you're like, you know, you're the bitch and you need to check yourself, that's not no. going to that's not gonna get it in, no. into me. No, no. I'm saying, like, if we in a setting, right, where let's just say, like this room right here. You dig what I'm saying? It's what it's about eight to ten of us in this room, and we're in this room together. You and I walked in this room together, and let's just say something was said or done, okay? And I had no way of knowing you would say it or do it. Yeah. But I felt that it needed to be addressed. Yeah. Well, to be honest with you, I'm going to address the issue. Right then and now, I'm gonna address the issue. I'm not finna. I'm not gonna look down on you. I'm not. But I'm gonna let you know. Hey, look, man, that shit, that ain't cool, man. You know, I like when you boss up like that, too. Actually, <laughs> you crazy Actually. as hell, man. <laughs> you can check me any motherfucker. <laughs> you crazy as hell. But I'm, I'm gonna let you know right then and now. Hey, listen, man, that shit, that ain't cool. And allow you the opportunity to address it and correct it. Now, I'm not going to try But, you know, sometimes you. things are corrected and adjusted in afterthought. Yeah. Sometimes people, in the heat of the moment, they don't do and say the right shit. That's real. And then you go home I've been and a you victim think of that. about it. And you're I, like, I, I, I've been not even a victim. I've been guilty. I've been guilty of that. I don't always say the right shit and do the right shit at the right time. I don't do that. And, and I, I, accept, I correct myself and understand. If I don't understand it, I'm going to tell you, man, I don't really, I don't get it. If you upset about it, I'm sorry, but I don't get it. I still try to make the correction because I care about our relationship. 
However, if I don't get it, I don't get it. Now, if you under, if you explain it to me to where I can understand, hopefully we can move forward and prevent this from happening again. So, can you give me a good deal on a rifle? <laughs> <laughs> I know you're saying something now. Feels, <laughs> feels. <laughs> One, two, three, four, feels. <laughs> no, I get you. I got you, and that's all good. So I'm going to uh, see our girl, Wendy. Oh. I'll be on on Friday. Oh. If this airs, I don't know when this shit airs. Okay. But Friday, this Friday after this interview, I'm right. going to go down there. Okay. And um, Super Bowl I, Friday. Uh, yeah. Okay. Right. Super Bowl Friday. Go yeah. Niners. Right, by the way. <laughs> right on. By the way. All right. Bay Area. And the uh, area. And I, uh, you know, I was there the day I was on the show the day that she told everybody she was in the in the, in the rehab place, right? Mm. And um, I'm glad to say that out of all the everything that she's gone through, that I feel like. As friend friend wise, I feel like I'm one of the real ones. You know what I'm saying? Cause okay. I don't. I'm not in this. You know, I'm not. I'm not. I'm just. I I keep it one hundred, just like I'm talking to you. Yeah. Like I'm talking to you, and I think that my comedy is the same way. It's very matter of fact and very the voice of the people type shit. You know right. what I'm saying? Because. People need real people mm. in their lives. That's right. Real people that's not trying to dick ride and not trying to get clicks and likes and all that right. type of stuff. You and that's why I think that you with your family around, mom, everything like that, and you know Wendy is not just her and 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 her son. He's in college, but she she doesn't put her circle down much tighter. I know mine's chopped down. My my tour last year was called the Easily Annoyed Comedy Tour because a bitch does get easily annoyed by shit. But I've changed it this year. 2020, my comedy tour is called a Fresh Out of Favors comedy tour. <laughs> I'm fresh the fuck out. You know? Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I, I just, uh, I, I got to, um, got to keep keep real folks close to you. Right. The real ones, you know? That's what Nip said anyway. That's real. Everybody can't Circle go. Circle your smile, everybody can't go. Everybody Absolutely. Can't go. Now, it's, you, you said this, you spoke a little bit about this, but... How do you how do you describe your style of comedy? What what genre is it? It's explicit and adult, mm -hmm. but not offensive. Okay. Because I think there's a way that you can you know be very descriptive mm -hmm. without offending anybody. You know, I have fortunately or unfortunately, I have pastors and first ladies that have been at my show. I'm right. like, what are you doing here? And they're like, we like you to laugh, too. You know what they're doing here? <laughs> you know what they're doing now. And what they're going to do later, too. Mm. But um, I don't, I don't, I really strive not to offend. Okay. Because I don't want nobody walking out like, oh, my God, she's so explicit. Like, I just can't. Mm. Like, I don't know who they thought they was coming to see. You need to do your research before you come see me. That's right. If you don't know me. <laughs> but I, 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 I just speak I just speak the language of other people. Right. You know, I'm still in these streets somewhat. And I I I I'm very descriptive, you know, as you know, we were talking about dicks and shit in the first <laughs> fucking ten minutes, which wasn't this the way that I was, was where to you go. took the conversation. I don't remember anything about yeah. me doing that. <laughs> But um, because I think there's an art to it. it. Cussing is just like any other language, I sure. believe. And there's a way it's to an do emphasis. It. Yeah, it's an emphasis. It's a way to emphasize a certain topic of discussion. Do they know we're on the radio? Yeah, they. But we ain't on the when radio. When I was out there, uh, why they came and closed the door on me when I was talking? Man, I think we we are right. We are right. Let well, me ask you. This. I'll, I'll regulate if you want me to. Well, you, it, no, do I what you it. feel. Do no, what you no, feel, no. Lunel. I just don't want it to sound crazy. Nah, man, don't worry about sounding crazy, man. You know what I'm saying? Just do what you feel. You know, worry about you. How everybody else will see that. that see ain't how your you business. check me like that? See, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> now, you, you, how was it being in a film with Dave Chappelle, Bradley Cooper, and Lady Gaga in A Star is Born? How was and that? And Dice Clay. And Andrew Dice Clay. Mm -hmm. How the fuck was that? Um, well, my scene was only with Gaga and Bradley. You talk about A Star is Born, of course. Mm -hmm. But I felt very proud to be one of the four comics. That Eddie Griffin was in it, too. Right. I felt very proud to be one of the four comics that was in that movie. Mm. 
um, is because I had a relationship with Bradley for many years. Right. I'm sure that's why. We did a movie, a Sandra Bullock movie years ago called All About Steve. Okay. And Bradley Cooper and myself and Ken Jung mm. were in that movie. Okay. And then as you see, Bradley and Ken went on to make, you know, the uh, Hangover series. Right. And then um, Bradley threw me in A Star is Born. It was a great honor, you know. I mean, Gaga and I... Uh, worked together on the telephone video that Gaga and Beyonce did years gotcha. ago. And so I already had met her, and she's very cool, very down to earth. And um, uh, so, I mean, for a chick that lives, you know, in the Crenshaw district, it's pretty pretty amazing, you know? <laughs> That's what's up, man. Yeah. That's what's up. Do you always see yourself doing comedy? Uh, like, or, or would you do a horror movie or... You know, a drama or a suspense thriller. I can't say what I won't do, especially if the coin is right. But do you right. have interest in doing it? I don't have any interest in doing a horror movie because I'm too scary. <laughs> I, I, I might not be able to pull out of it. But if you know everything that... Now, there's danger in not being able to pull out. You better get that. That's what I'm saying. I may not be able but, to pull out. But look, though, but if you already know everything that's going on in the movie... Like, it's scary when you're watching it for the first time. But if you already know what's going on, wouldn't that shit kind of like... Well, when you go to Universal Studios and you know you're going on Halloween Horror Night, you know those are not really monsters, those are actors, right. but you still get scared. Is that... <laughs> so I don't, I, don't, I don't have any desire to do a horror movie unless it was comedic. Gotcha. Um, or do I want to do something dramatic? I do. But I may not be able to pull out of that either because sometimes the emotions that you got to dig down, you can't shake it off as easy mm -hmm. just when they say cut, you know? Yeah. Um, I don't want to just always do comedic films. I do want to stretch my wings and do some dramatic stuff. Right. But um, Which I think you have enormous potential to do. Thank you. Tip. I think you're just, I think you're incredibly talented. I think that you have like a, a oneness with yourself. Like you know who you are, you know what you have to offer and you don't try to you don't get outside of that or let nobody carry you too far in no other direction. You always remain grounded and solid within who the fuck you are and what the fuck you do. I really appreciate and that. And I, I think that that's at the nucleus of every great actor. Well, I, I appreciate that and I, I'm gonna agree with that. <laughs> I, uh, I agree with you. But I, I think, of course, my comfort zone is comedy because my brain is wired comedically. Comedians' brains are wired differently than other people's right. brains. We see things through a different eye. We see the humor in everything. I mean, I was at, for example, uh, my mother had passed. I was at my mother's funeral. Sorry I was sitting to hear in that. the front row. Thank Sorry you very to hear much. That. She, casket right there. Casket right to, right, right to the front Okay. Bed. I'm sitting on the front row, busting the fuck up. I'm bent over. People thought I was crying. Yeah. So they were rubbing my back while I was laughing. Why? Because my, my, my mom's friend just really wanted to sing at the funeral. And she couldn't sing. The bitch couldn't sing. <laughs> and then she wanted to do five motherfucking verses. I'm like, oh, my God. Like, my mother's going to rise up and slap the fuck out this bitch. And I was just... <laughs> Bent over laughing, so, you know. That's the thing about comedy and comedians, man. And I feel like I have a little bit of this in myself. <laughs> we find ways to find laughs and laughter in some of the most tragic moments. You're very witty, and you're very quick, and you're a little bit of a wordsmith. Okay, a and little so, bit. I see how you put that in there. A little bit of a wordsmith. I see a little bit of a wordsmith. I've seen bigger wordsmiths <laughs> than you, you know what I'm saying? Big, <laughs> and, and so, you know, you, you, have the, you have the gene, for sure, because comedy is way more intelligent than people give us credit for as right. well. You know, um, I, I, I personally just, I, I, I will do a dramatic role at some point, I will probably win, you know, some awards for yeah, that. Yeah, fuck, fucking right, you will. You know, I just, uh, I just, uh, I, I feel comfortable be doing comedy though. That's now, what my wheelhouse is. Now, listen, you, you, you also have done, in addition to uh, Dolomite is my name, you also did another movie with Eddie Murphy, uh, Coming to America Two. Two questions. Yeah. One. What is it about working with Eddie that has been, you know? separate and apart from any other film you've done? And the second question, y'all didn't fuck it up, did you? I'm so glad you asked that. 
I'll answer the first question first. What it is about working with Eddie is that for a comedian, it's sort of like working with the, you know the holy grail of comics, like to have to have him know your name. I I was very friendly with Charlie. Charlie and me, mm. listen, I'm poor little bit. I'm Charlie. Charlie. Oh, yeah, okay. That's right, man. Here, let me give you some more now. Okay. Let me give you some more. Come on. Thank you, baby. That's all right. Come on. Yeah, I get some ice. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Thank you most you. certainly can. You most certainly can. Pour a little bit out for Charlie. Charlie and I were, 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 were good friends. Charlie and I made some bullshit movies together. We did. <laughs> I mean, really bullshit. And we did some, you know, stuff uh, together. And and through that is how I think Eddie might might have learned of me. Mm. I don't know, but I know that Eddie has an affinity for funny women. Were you he in likes Norbit? Funny women. No, I wasn't in Norbit. Oh. But if I was, I'd have surely been Rasputin. <laughs> no. Oh my God! I told Eddie, I said, "Thanks for making a character look just like me in a bikini." <laughs> Fuck. But um, uh, you know, it was it was it, it's the same level of respect. You know, when a person has that it thing, they literally change the air when they come in the room. That's real. You know, you got it. You know. I do. Yeah, you got it. And I might have a, a little swag juice nah, on me, got, too. Nah, man, listen, man. You, 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 I don't know if I change aura. the air nah, when I come aura, in the room. Your aura fills the room. You know what I'm saying? But like if Denzel comes, I would have felt the same way working with Denzel. I would have felt the same way working with, um, you know, Pam Greer. Or you something. know what I'd like to see? You know who I'd like to see you work with? Who would you love to see me work with? Samuel Jackson. Oh, I don't think we would get along. Why you don't think y'all would get along? It ain't about y'all getting along. It's about will your talents come together to make a masterpiece. However, if you don't have a chemistry, it's hard to fake it. Sound like you know Samuel and you got something I to don't. say that you don't. And know. I, I, I don't know him. And I don't uh, play golf. Okay. You know, he's out there with the boys. I don't see Samuel with big bonding relationships with females in the industry, but I may uh, not know. I may not know. It may be I don't, I don't know. I know he's a guy's guy and stuff like that. Okay. But I just don't really see him, you know, ch- chummed up with a, a bunch bunch of females, even people he's worked with before. But as I say, I don't know. Yeah. I, I wasn't on the set. I, I don't, don't know. either. He might be the greatest I don't guy. Either. I'm just thinking about, I'm thinking about his persona, his. I would his, like to crack him up. Set, if I thought talent. I could crack him up, that would break the ice. I mean, I think you. Like I just think that your personality and his personality coming together for for a narrative. I to absolutely perform. would try to make it happen. That's for damn sure because he's a great fucking talent. <clears throat> he has a backstory that is nothing but winner, winner, winner. Right. You know, from doing New Jack City and being fresh out the motherfucking rehab. And starting from nothing. And starting from the bottom, now yeah. you're here. You know, I think that he has really, really carved out a fucking niche for himself yeah. that is really, you know, great. Yeah. I don't know what his relationships with women are. You know, he might be bossy, he might be mean. He might be a pussycat, I don't know. Man. Could I put it aside to do the work? Sure I could, but if you're a dick... Uh, then the work is gonna suffer. But if you go into the work thinking that a person could potentially be a dick, you go. What if he thinks I'm a dick? What have you heard about me? <laughs> <laughs> what have you heard about me? And he said, I'm just goddamn Lunell. So, yeah. what's your dream role? Well, um, I really want to do a movie where. All these fat chicks, you know? Okay. Like, I want to do a movie with Melissa McCarthy okay. and myself and okay. that other chick that's on that show, This Is Us, I think, or whatever. Okay. She's really heavy, and I'm going to throw Lizzo's ass in there because there's never been a movie with four fat lead women. And I know we could fucking kill that shit. I don't see why not. It's never I... been done. Shit. So you saying a very talented thin woman could not get in? Well, yeah, as an extra. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. No, I just, you know, I just think it's something that's different because I don't think you should kind of categorize it. But I mean, I feel like no. When you ask me, that's one right, of my dreams. You what? fucking I, ask and me. And be it for me to. I'm not categorizing no, shit. I, I work with no anybody. Right. I have no right. To you know, I've been the biggest bitch dream. on the set for a, a, a long fucking time. I give a fuck right. about that. I but get it. but if my dream would be to do something like that. I think it'd be empowering. I think it would be 
fun. Okay. I think we got a lot in common. Yeah, I, think it'd be, I think it'd be funny. Yeah, you, you got know, you but, and but Melissa McCarthy. That's, you can stop that's right enough. there. That's but enough. I want love stories as well. Sure. Hell, you know. Fat, fat people fall in love every goddamn day. <laughs> you know, my husband loved my fat ass. There's, you know, and and people don't, you don't see fat love making on TV. Well, you had you Mike see. and Molly. You had Mike and Molly. Yeah, they were great. That was dope. I did that love that. Extremely dope. And you had Roseanne and and yeah, and and, and John Tishy, Goodman. And Tishy went crazy with the oh. with the with the red. Well, we talking about fat now. We ain't talking All about right, your cool. mind. All right, cool, cool, cool. Mind. I got you. I got you. I get it. Uh, I get it. I just think that would be fun. But um, you know, I I I, I want to just work. Mm. I lo- I love to work. I'm not one of them bitches to complain on the set. You know, like if you want all your life to be on a studio set, and it gets to be eleven o'clock, two thirty, three o'clock in the morning, and you're whining and bitching. Well, bitch, didn't you work all your life to be here? Mm. So where are you trying to go? That's more important than being here. That makes sense. You're making gangster moves. You making money. You're working with people that you. Beg to work with that know your name. So what are you fucking? What are you? What are you bitching about? I don't. I don't get it. I worked sixteen motherfucking hour days mm. when we was doing the last OG. Right. And we worked some long, long hours on Coming to America. But that's right. in every damn film. You are. You know that. Mm-hmm. So you know you got a trailer. To if you're lucky, in. the worst thing you can have on a film is a short day. That yeah, your then you're wrapped. That means your ass ain't in the movie. Yeah, yeah. You know, you be here three. We'll wrap you by four. You'll be. You're doing a cameo. Man, like, damn. That, ain't, that ain't no role. No. That ain't no role. No. Um, what female comedians do you respect? All of them. Even the ones who ain't funny. Yeah, I still respect you. Mm. Because being in this grind is a hard motherfucking thing to try to do. Okay. Now, who do I like? Yeah, who do you like? Like my favorites? Yeah. Fucking Wanda Sykes, that bitch. She dope as fuck. They should have let her. Uh, she dope as fuck. Her and Mike Oscars. Epps doing it. Her and Mike Epps doing a. Uh, they doing a. They doing a series together now. I can't wait till it comes out. It's gonna be the funniest thing since fucking. Funnier than Curry. I'm glad you told me that. I'll text that bitch today. Yo, what's up with that motherfucking hey, child? Guess what? I sure enough called Mike. Told him, you better get me in there. I sure enough called Hook Mike. Hook me up. Yeah. Yeah, I love Wanda. Wanda kills me. Uh, I thought she did a great job hosting um, the Spirit Awards. I think the Trumpet Spirit Awards we just did. And they should. she did such a good job, they should have let her host the Oscars. I, think I don't know she why should. they don't She'd let be a phenomenal, her host She'd be a phenomenal host. She'd she be phenomenal really, really host. really, really good. Since all they care about is people who ain't got any kind of back and forth with the LGBTQ community, she would be a perfect candidate. I love Wanda. I love um, Margaret Cho. I don't know as much about Margaret Cho. Funny bitch. Okay. Uh, I love uh, another Asian female named Ali Wong. I don't know her either. She doesn't know I'm alive. Yeah, there's a lot of people out there. <laughs> she doesn't know I'm alive, but I love it. I love you, Ali Wong. Okay. Um, I'm going to look these people Aquafina, Aquafina, who was, she was in Crazy Rich Asians as well. You ever seen that movie? It's no. a fucking no. funny ass movie. No, I haven't. I'm going to check it out. That movie's good. And um, I like, you know, Thea Vidal. Who's Thea. really crazy? Thea, 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 Thea. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah she she's dope. the first black woman with she a dope. show she in dope. her own name. She dope. You know, of course, Laura Hayes, my home girl from Oakland, Cole's mama on Martin, okay. one of the queens of comedy. You know, okay. there was Samora and Monique gotcha. and Adele and Laura Hayes. Okay. Shout out to Oakland, Laura. All uh, right now. And Adele Givens, of course. Adele Givens is a bad motherfucker. You know, I love Adele. Adele Givens is a bad motherfucker. I could go, I could go on. You know, uh, hell, um, uh, my Latinas. You know, that I, I like, I like the women that are doing it and making a living. Because even if you don't like somebody, this right. is what I found. Right. I found that even if I think somebody's a fucking hack, right, they got some fans. Right. Somebody dig them. <laughs> you know, somebody dig that. Right. It ain't gotta be me. Right. But I respect I respect all all these sisters out here working. Well, man, listen, it has been an incredible pleasure and an honor. Do you know any more about me now than you did when we sat down? I know so much more about you now. You do? Yeah, yeah. I know that you can get serious. And the reason I asked you if you thought about drama was because when you went from, like, playful, sexual comedy and went straight into, 
well, I'm not even fucking right now. But when you went from that to that, that showed me you had range. You did. I might have stretched that a little bit. <laughs> You might have stretched one. I might have stretched that. <laughs> listen, <laughs> hey man, listen. I might have stretched that a little. Even bit. still, you can't take that feeling back away from me. I You're know. like, I what I felt then was genuine, and I know it was passionate coming from you because if it didn't mean shit, you wouldn't have said it. It's true, you know. I I I just have to. There's a lot of people going through what I'm going through. You know, mm. there's a lot of people going through what I'm going through. Your husband gets sick, or maybe your wife. That's right. You know, and um, do you still love them? Will you still be there? Mm. Did that make or break your fucking relationship? Mm. Is that what you had in common? Because mm. you had hot sex, you made kids, and made family. And then mm. when that goes, what you got after that? That makes sense. It's just, you know, it's just life. You get older and you, and you learn shit. You know, I never would have thought that I would be in this position, but, you know, um, you're still here. We still laugh. That's right. I still wake up to beautiful texts every morning. Of my life. That's right. To tell me I'm the most beautiful thing he's ever seen. Right. And if I got that behind me, I can go out and slay, slay the motherfucking world. That's right. I got 99 problems, but some dick ain't one. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, that's a cold motherfucking way to end this motherfucking segment. Now, we have a tradition here. Uh-oh. We're going to play a game. Let me see some. Are we playing a game? Uh, we're not going to play a game. However, we're going to maintain the tradition of expeditiously by issuing a word of the week. Okay. Um, the word of the week is usually indicative of the discussion or the guest. And um, I, I have such an enormous appreciation for this word and its association to not only you, but our discussion here today, at least parts of it. All right. So, the word of the day, excuse me, so, the word of the week is lascivious. Lascivious. Lascivious's definition is inclined to lustfulness. No. No. Feeling or revealing an overt and often offensive sexual desire. Oh. Lascivious is usually used to describe a person's behavior that is driven by thoughts of sex. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use it in a sentence right now so people who listening can go to work tomorrow, stand around a water cooler, they use the word like they've known it their whole life. They ain't going to give you nor me no credit. But Okay, because I'm lascivious as a motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, here's to you, man. Thank you. And this toast is the long money. And strong orgasms. Amen. Jesus, Father, when was that? Lord Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> now let's use this. Let's use lascivious okay. in a sentence. Now, can I ask a question before you do that? Go ahead. You how did that. you, uh, coming from your background and everything, yeah. like that, how did you become such a wordsmith? How did you, because you got the rep for that now. You know, they, 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 they. You know, it, yeah. impersonate they expect you that for me. and do they all that. And, you know, I have a Bachelor of Arts degree in English Literature while you Whoa, bullshit. Whoa, what the fuck? We didn't talk while, about while that. you bullshit. You been to school? Yeah, fool. <laughs> <laughs> I graduated from Cal State Haywood up in the Bay Area. Man, hold and, up, man. Um, what, what was your major? Uh, 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 English, English Literature and Communications minor. Wait a minute, though. So what year was this? Mm-mm, mm-mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but tell I done had to start drinking water. Now you trying <laughs> okay, to fry me that? with the liquor for dates and shit. <laughs> okay, wait. No, but I'm just saying. I tell everybody, even in my act, I say if I cuss you out, there's one thing. But you better get really scared if I take a pen to paper on your ass. Oh, you now, have to write well, I, mean, to, you I know. just want to know: was it before the comedy? Yeah, it was before the comedy. So it was before you had any idea, any inclination to do comedy. Absolutely. Okay, when I went you. to jail, I was the one who what would you write to jail letters. For, man? Embezzlement. Embezzlement. Yeah, Explain I, embezzlement to the people. Oh Lord. Yeah, yeah. Your cameraman had a phone. Don't worry out. about it, man. Don't worry. He fired. Don't worry about <laughs> it. So, what? Well, Explain embezzlement then. To embezzlement people. is, you know, stealing from one's job. You know. Mm. And I. Where I, you work? I work at the bank. 
Oh shit! I was that bitch. Oh shit, man, come on! Man. I was the bitch every motherfucker wanted. You did your motherfucking They're thing. They're like, bitch, let's do this paper chase. Let's get this thing. You did your thing, Lunel. You know, and I did that. So I took you did some your money. Thing. You did your thing, thing. man. Fuck that shit, man. Fuck that, that shit. How much time you do? Four months, eighteen days. That's man. all. Yeah, on the one year. You bitch. got the fuck off. They didn't give me a year. I know. You got the fuck and, off, Lunel. And I got, I got, I got away with it for over ten years. Man, you got the fuck off, Lunel. If it hadn't have been so much, I'd have got away with it at all. A period. You dig what I'm saying? Hey, man, shout out. To you, the real G, one of the real G's in this motherfucker who got down made away scot free, man, with the government's money. <laughs> you know what Don't I'm say that too nah, loud. I got to say it. I got to say it because I did my time and I, I paid know, my you debt did, to you society. You paid your debt to society and you came out and then you made your own money. But and I'm paying my fucking income taxes too. Absolutely. However, well, I'm I, audited already. I mean, I mean, it, but anyway, yeah. All that aside, the government is taking so much from its citizens. That any of us that have a way or found a way to, you know, even the score a little bit. Like, cause, that. cause we take it when it's our turn. So I just like to stand up and celebrate motherfuckers who give it to them <laughs> when it's their turn. Celebrate the gangster over you here. You did what I'm saying? But I, 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 so I did that. So that's why so I. So you've been to college and prison. I've been to college and prison. You've been to college and prison. I did worse than prison. I did county. Uh. Right. What well, counties? The, the good thing about counties is short time. Yeah, but every day is a year. Shit, mm-hmm. you know. Missed the first birth. Uh, first, I missed my daughter's first Halloween. Missed her Damn. first Thanksgiving. Damn. But I got out in time for Christmas. And but guess birthday. what? Though she don't remember none of that. Now, shit. Now she don't remember that shit. You know what I'm but saying? But she know her mama's a G, and I still got my commissary slips. How about you? you I, <laughs> I, I got do. Letters from jail. Oh, I do. I got, well, I I got, got the wrist. I got letters. I got letters that motherfuckers wrote me. I got all shit. them old, you know, watercolor M and M colored Christmas cards. Yeah, and yeah. Shit I like got that. all that shit. I got some of that. They shit. don't I got know about making. Too. The, the I ain't looked at you. I ain't M&M. looked back. Well, I do. I ain't looked back. Well, you have so much to look forward to. Nah, man, you do too. I do too, but I stay. I I look back every now and then. You know what? Eddie this Murphy said something. Where I came from. Eddie Murphy said something uh, on Comedians in Cars Getting Coffee. Have you ever seen that show? Yes, of course. Okay, so I watched Comedians in Cars Getting Coffee, and I saw the Eddie Murphy episode. So and, did I. And, 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 and he said something that resonated with me. He said, I don't do a lot of time. I don't, I, he says, I don't spend a lot of time looking back at the old days reminiscing. He says, as far as I see it, this is as best as it's ever been, and the best is yet to come. Well, that's easy for you or he to say, I'm still two blocks from the marathon shop. That shit don't so matter. I, yes, it does. That shit don't I matter. Gotta, I got I to gotta get yep. out the block. Now, and then out. I won't look back either. Now, hear me out, though. <laughs> where you are, listen, where you are in life, regionally, physically, metaphysically, uh, 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 psychologically, it's about the company you're keeping. Yeah, exactly, but you that's understand? also easy to say. No, but listen, no, 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 no. If you are keeping f- great company, and I am, let's just say right now, right, you're keeping great company two blocks from the marathon store, which is a a, a area that is coming up. So if you stay right there, oh, I'm gonna keep the house. You dig what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm not getting rid if of the you house. Stay right there. That shit gonna got down. It's but gonna, I am gonna get off the block. It's mm-hmm. gonna multiply tenfold. However, but if you have the best company that you are keeping right then and there, and let's cut two. If you were to be removed from that environment, I would still have the same motherfuckers. Wait a minute. No, because I've already weeded down everybody. <laughs> I've already got all the trash out of my circle. My circle is tight but, right now. But what I'm saying is, if you put you in, if you put you in Bel Air. With some motherfuckers who ain't as good as ain't as good a company as what you've been keeping, you ain't gonna get the same energy and you ain't gonna receive the same kind of results. But a, a, I would never move to Bel Air. Okay, because okay? I'm not going to fuck up there. Mm. Uh, I just want to go to Marina Del Rey. I'll be happy if I can go to Marina Del Rey. Marina That's Del Rey. That's all I want to do: be by the water. That's right. Be peaceful. Okay. I'm a Pisces. Water keeps me calm. Can you swim? I can swim. You do you swim? I do swim. Okay. Mm-hmm. I don't swim. I just soak. Well, I swim, but I, <laughs> but but there's a but though. <laughs> I swim in shit that says five, seven, nine, twelve on the side. <laughs> I don't swim in the ocean. Right. I go up to my nipples, and that's about as far as I go okay. in the water. Okay. 
You know, I might fall in the water, but That's I'm not three going feet, out there. Lunel, the Nigga, your I am five is... foot far. I can go to But the your water. nipples is down from Not your, that the far down. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> God damn shit. I got my good bra on today. What the fuck is this shit? I'm done with you. I did it. Hey. But no, but real quick, just how did you become this wordsmith, though? Man, was it to be honest with you. Was it before the rap? Did that aid in the rap? What? Man, to be honest with you, man, I'm going to be like, as far back as I can recall, um, there was a teacher that I had in school. Douglas High School. Her name was Miss Pearson. Hey, Miss Pearson. What's going on, Miss Pearson? She still be, you know, out and about working out and, you know what I'm God saying? God bless in, her. In the hood still to this Teachers day. Teachers make a difference. Absolutely, man. And I thank her. I thank her. I cannot thank her enough. But, okay, so Miss Pearson was my literature teacher. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I was in ninth grade. All right. And I was a badass kid. I had been expelled. <laughs> from one school, or expelled from one county of school. Oh. And then I came to Douglas High, which was my mama's, my family's alma mater. Alma mater. And I came there, and I was still known as this little badass kid. Uh, I cut most of my classes. I did not really focus, pay any attention, or even try. Miss um, Pearson. Like, my favorite subject is math. Wow. Math is my favorite You're subject. You're a brainiac. I mean... I didn't I, flip them bricks that quick. <laughs> so, Miss Pearson. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, I was in her class, and she saw, like, that I was... She saw what kind of kid I was. And rather than criticize me, uh, condemn me, or, or ostracize me, what she did was she engaged me. She 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 she, she kind of came in and said, "Hey man, like, what is it that you want? What you want to do? What you want to do in life?" And I said, "Well, I want to be a rapper. I want to be a rapper. That what I that what I'm gonna do." And she said, "All right, well, look, a rapper is basically another, an extension of a poet. That's right. And do you Gone, know? Do you know how many levels?" Of poetry there are, and do you know how many links there are to literature and poetry? And I say, nah, I don't really know. So she's the one who taught me what a metaphor was. Mm -hmm. She taught me what similes and antonyms mm -hmm. was. She ways. Yeah, all that shit, right? Um, onomatopoeia and all that kind of old shit right there. So she taught me that, and she also taught me vocabulary. She said, well, you can either, if you're going to be a rapper, you can either say shit the way everybody else say it, mm -hmm. or you can say it in a way that only you can articulate it and make it unique to your style and your, and your art. And as she challenged me, I became intrigued with really the thought of knowing shit that other motherfuckers didn't know. Uh, and there was a time where I failed all my classes, but I made a 93 in algebra, and I made an 89 in Miss Pearson class. I failed every other class, even PE. I got called to the principal's office. Dr. Hill called me to the principal's office, and he said, son, you obviously know the work. You can obviously do what you need to do to succeed. Why won't you just apply yourself? I say, well, Dr. Hill, it because you got a, a, a building full of students who trying to figure out what they going to do. While they trying to figure out what they going to do, you giving them suggestions of what to do. You showing them how to be workers. I ain't really I ain't trying to be no worker. I know what I want to do, and y'all ain't showing me how to do that. So what I see what I'm going to do, I'm going to pull what I need to pull out like this building, mm -hmm. and I'm going to leave the rest here for y'all so y'all can brainwash all the rest of these students in here. And he say, son, get out of my office. <laughs> <laughs> So that was the beginning of my love. But vocabulary love. and numbers, that's what that's what you need. That's what that was the beginning of my love for vocabulary. And um, as many time as many people that would like to and as much as I allow them to think that my vocabulary came from prison and dictionaries and really man, let me tell you something. 
I ain't never learned more words and how to use more words than I have from just being in regular conversation. Just just, just having a discussion between you and me. Because you're so tactful, even in Dolomite, when you were talking to Eddie, and you said, you know, you're a bit doughier than, <laughs> than the people that we normally use. That was so tactful. Mm. You know, okay, real quick before we go out, go ahead, you ask know me my, as many questions as you want to. You go know, ahead. my favorite, my okay, you want to know my <laughs> there's two songs I want to talk about that. Okay, are yours. let's hear it. Okay, so what you know about that, right? All right, okay, so that uh was actually a that was actually a faster song, oh. and that used to be played in the gay club. Dun, 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 dun. They used to do that in the 70s. I ain't know nothing. I know, I know. It's no no diss. I'm just saying I know where that lick came from. You talking about dun, 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 That ain't what you know Yeah, 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 That's what you know about that. Now, what you talking about is, what I think is, is why you want to. You talking about Crystal Waters. Am I? Yeah. Yeah, you talking about Crystal Waters. Yeah, 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 my bad. I was aware of that. Yeah, yeah, that used to be a club song. Yeah, I was aware of that, Crystal And my favorite song that makes me feel like I could get on the pole is I'll Bring Them Out. Hey, that's my shit. That's my shit right there. I'll be ready. I appreciate that, man. I want, I mean, you know, I need to tell you man, that. Man, I thank you for all that you've done to contribute to the culture and the community. Um, and I appreciate and receive all the 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 thanks that comes from you, the act the the accommodate like everything that you say to me that that shows me that you appreciate my like what I do. Your whole story. My life's work. Yeah. Thank you for that. Everything, your fatherhood, your family, the show. You got right on. you're one of the wholesome shows that stayed on. Usually they, they kill them off. Yeah, I mean La La show and all that. They didn't have enough bitch slapping and controversy. Yeah, and Tamika like man, we kinda you know what I'm saying, we keep it just controversial enough. Just enough. Just enough. But we still maintain a solidarity amongst one another that And the shit is real. Like people, you know, you go through shit and you get back together, you know, you go through shit and you That's get what back it's gonna together. be. You go through shit and you get back together. Go that's gonna shit. be that's it's a it's a dance it's the dance of life. And the dance of love. And the dance of love. The dance of love. So, before we got into that whole long extended. You was about to use back and forth. L- l- I, I was going. I was going to use in a, lascivious in, 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 a, in a sentence. A sentence. <clears throat> Backstage at the award show, Lunell leered at Michael B. Jordan with lascivious intent. Hey man, show enough did. <laughs> show, show the fuck did. <laughs> and I do it again, goddamn. <laughs> hey hey you guys, can I tell them my Instagram? Man, you can tell them anything else, how, however you want them to get in touch with you. Okay. If you guys will uh, hear this podcast and you'd like to comment to me personally, you can hit me on my Instagram at Lunell at L U E N E L L. Yeah. Follow me there. And my website is heylunell.com. Because that's what everybody says. Hey Lunell, hey Lunell. H E Y L U E N E L L dot com for tickets, for tour dates, for my podcast before those are on there. And you dig. Yeah, you dig. And then also um, <laughs> Facebook is the official Lunell. And if I got to spell official, you need to go and click <laughs> fucking radio off right now. Now, before you get out of here, man, one question that you didn't answer, man. You One question that you didn't answer, because it? I asked you this. Before. Is coming to America too uh, good? Did, did they fuck it up? Okay. I will say this. Coming to America. Because we are all I waiting. Know, I know. I know. As fans, a cult following. I am in the cult. I'm in the coming to America cult. So, we need to know. Did they fuck this motherfucker up? I'm going to give you the real deal, holy fear. I don't get, give a fuck. Well, get that motherfucker to me. Well, does. get that motherfucker to me. Get that motherfucker to me. First of all, the Coming to America script is probably the best script I've read in my career. God damn. Hey. Second of all, it has got everybody that was in it before 
in it again. Ooh. Except for the great Mad Sinclair, who played Prince Hakeem's mother. Mm. She passed away, and we so uh, sorry referred to, to her in the movie. So sorry to hit it. Um, that thirsty sister <laughs> that thought that Prince Hakeem was Arsenio. Right. She's not in it. Uh. And Soul Glow's not in it. Uh. Because Soul Glow, but, you know, everybody else is back. That's From right. Louis Anderson to the Samuel old man. L. Jackson. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, uh, uh, for you radio listeners, I'm gonna show, uh, tip a picture right now. Let's see from it. behind the scenes because we can't post any until December when the movie. I just want to see it, and, and I will describe it to you. Yeah, you describe I it would, to the people. I will describe it to you, and oh, holy shit! That's right. That's right. Holy shit. And that's what you have to look forward to. The wardrobe is done by the great Ruth Carter, who did the wardrobe for hey. Black Panther. And the she wardrobe. She will surely win an Oscar. And, and the wardrobe for uh, Dolomite, Dolomite is my name. Right, Ruth, Absolutely. My so if you want to know who put that, that beard and that <laughs> afro... And that suit on and me, that, that suit, was that Ruth. Yeah, suit. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so, um, John um, Amos, Louis Anderson. This is I'm amazing. Not sure, I mean, everybody. It's everybody. amazing. Wesley Snipes is in it. Rick Ross. Myself. Yeah, I know they call Rick Ross instead of calling me. I mean, you know what I'm saying? But I, but, but I, I ain't I, had nothing to do with that. Talk to Craig. I know you didn't. I spoke to Craig. I've been speaking to Craig. Talk but to Craig. Listen. Here, look at this. I respect. Any artist who it's has wonderful. an opportunity, man, to elevate his skills. The black excellence in this Shout movie is going to fuck you up. They got real South wow. African men and women and dancers. So, look, where is uh, Zamunda supposed Zamunda. to be? Zamunda. Where is Zamunda supposed to be located, like regionally, as far as Africa goes? Because Africa is expansive. So, Zamunda. As it is, <laughs> as it is uh, art- articulated within the movie, is it South Africa, West Africa, East Africa, North Africa? I don't fucking know. <laughs> I don't know. It's fucking Zamunda. It's, it's fucking Zamunda, motherfucker. It's fucking Zamunda. It's next to Wakanda. <laughs> yeah, right down the street, right down the road from Wakanda. Yeah, that shit fine. But um, that shit fine. It's really. I ain't gonna, it's going I ain't gonna to. Hate. It's it going to fine. blow the fuck up. It, it looked fine. And Wesley Snipes. As funny as he was in Dolomite, and he was funny as he shit as in Dolomite. Uh, he's even funnier in Coming to America. Uh, Eddie's amazing. Um, you know, Shari Headley's amazing. And John Amos, once again, the great. Right. And it's just so so much color and beautifulness, and the storyline is great. So, no, to answer your question, we did not Fuck it up. It's going to be amazing, and I couldn't be happier to be affiliated well, with that. You well, know? listen, I'm looking forward to it. I'm sure everyone listening to this podcast is looking forward to it. Breathe a big sigh of relief, people. You don't have to worry. Auntie Lunell would not lie to you. Hey, man. get what, man? Just show up at the movie theaters, man. Yeah, Feel let's make this bitch up. number one. We're going to have to be. Ain't no number one. Fuck that. 150, 150 million. 150 million. 150 million for a weekend. Yeah, you know because you got people in Africa and everybody waiting on this. It's, you did? It's gonna oh, man, amazing. that's going to take it even more. Yeah. That's going to take it even more. Let's go 250, quarter billion. Let's do it. Let's do it. One time for Lunel, man. This has been Expeditious. Watch your favorite episodes of Expeditiously right now on the Expeditiously YouTube page.